Hey, I'm Robert Pearson, and this is Follow the Leader, where we sit down on my lunch break and go through some Bible things. We are in Genesis chapter 3, verses 6 to 12. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of overlap with a uh, different one, uh, but this has a different focus. So, we are, uh, contextually, we are in the fall of man. God just made the world, and man's right about to screw it up. So, here we go. Uh, chapter 3, starting in verse 6. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from it its fruit and ate, and she gave also to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and that they sewed. Uh, then they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, so I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, Oh, the woman that you gave to be with me, she gave me from the tree, and I ate. <clears throat> So, uh, what kind of feelings do you have from this passage? Because uh, for me, I'm pretty frustrated with Adam. Really. Uh, your people take, you know, shots at Eve, and oh, she was deceived, and really it was Satan's fault. Adam could have done a lot here to, at any step in the game, stop it. Uh, she gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Her husband was there with her when she took the fruit from the tree. This is the only guy inside of, you know, in that area that God told him to his face, don't touch this tree, don't eat from it. And he's just standing there like, oh, I guess it's okay. Okay. What an idiot. So, immediately after that, they acknowledge what sin is. Uh, theologians argue all day long about the exact nuance of you know, what are we to take from them, realizing they're naked. The punchline is, though, they, because they disobeyed God, they now understand what sin is, and sin sucks. And with sin comes shame. So as soon as God shows up, he usually comes to walk with man every day, and uh, next thing you know, man hides from God because of his shame, because of his sin. And then, when called out on it, his answer was, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? God asked the question that cuts right to the heart of what happened. Obviously, he already knows the answer. Um, just like parents, you know. you got the one kid standing next to the broken lamp in the living room. Okay, what happened? You were playing with the ball in the house and you broke the lamp. Oh, uh, like, I know the answer, but... This is a meaningful exercise for you to, you know, own up to your mistakes and learn from it. So, oh, there we go. So his answer isn't, yes, I did. His answer is, oh, the woman you gave me, she gave me. So immediately he externalizes the blame, uh, the reason for his wrongdoing. He externalizes it. And... Um, that's, that's where the passage stops because it gets on to God's cursing everybody involved. But this is interesting. Because it, it kind of, it's a mirror, uh, uh, a magnifying glass or an allegory for what every single man really struggles with today. Um, you can see it in sitcoms, you can see it in what's joked about, where uh, the man has this passive role in his house. That the wife really runs everything, and the man just needs to sit there and go, oh, I don't know, go ask your mom, and not really take an active role in leading and being a part of the family. And that's, well, that's a shame. When you run from responsibility, when you don't, step up when you see somebody about to make a mistake, when you see someone doing something that you know is wrong, especially in the context of 
of family of your your marriage relationship when you don't speak out when you see somebody doing something that strikes you as wrong then you know what good are you why why are you even there they could they could get a paycheck from anywhere what good are you unless in being there you're actively working to help everybody around you become better without without any sort of personal motivation um that's that's what i believe firmly believe to be the real meaning of leadership is when you're working to uh, guide other people to become better for their own for the the sake of their own well-being um better better in an objective sense not in what you want them to be not in what they want to become but what in what is sort of objectively better being mature rather than immature uh, being patient rather than impatient being honest rather than dishonest things that no culture in the history of mankind have ever really uh with any serious degree lauded lying stealing cheating being dishonest well it's lying again um being immoral uh being tardy like ev almost every culture it's good to be on time. It's good to be honest. It's good to be mature and not act like children. These these are pretty universal things. Uh, you don't need the Bible to prove that you should act like an adult and be patient. So that's what we've got here. That's what is really intended in acting like a man, is that you work to uh, exemplify these things that are universal virtues, and you call out those things in others. Uh, when people are being dishonest, you know, say something. Hey, you should probably tell the truth. Um, and that's the the nuance and the details of how that plays out in your life is completely up to you. But say something. Um, be be a man. Be manly. When you're in that place and you see things going on that aren't right, aren't being mature, aren't being honest, aren't being uh, patient, just make a little comment like, Hey, you could be a little more patient or, you know, Hey, that could be better. Or, that needs to be straighter. Or, that needs to not be crooked. I mean, you do that kind of stuff on the job site all the time. That's crooked. That's not straight. Oh, you put that up wrong. Oh, you, you rip the hole out. So you gotta, you, um, strip the hole out. So now you gotta use a bigger screw or whatever. <clears throat> um, you, you make those sorts of corrections for tangible things. You should also make those sort of corrections in small, in kind ways for, for moral things. Uh, everyone should be more honest and more patient and more mature because you're around. That's a good portion of what being a man is. And you see Adam really kind of throws that by the wayside in that he just sits back. He allows someone to do something. Is someone he's close to. This is his wife. This is his only wife, the only other human on the planet, and he just kicks back and allows her to do something that is completely wrong, because he knows 100% that this is wrong, because God, the creator of the universe and physics and everything, and him, consequently, said, hey, don't touch this. Well, it's probably all right. So then, immediately, they work to cover their shame, and... So uh, I had, looking at the next question, what do you learn about yourself from this, right? Let's internalize the lesson because he ran and hid from God, knowing that he'd done something wrong. So he didn't correct somebody else, and then he found himself doing the same thing wrong that they were doing. If you don't stand out, if you don't speak up, when you see something wrong happening, then the next step is you're going to follow along. And you're going to find that you're doing it. And you're going to go, oh, no, they said it was okay. I saw everybody else doing it. Um, and so in following along, now you've screwed up. So how do you handle your screw-ups? Once again, owning your screw-ups, being a man, is owning your screw-ups. Taking responsibility for your actions. Saying, yes, I did that. Yes, it was stupid. And, yeah, I'm going to work to not do it again. And I'll, I'll fix I'll fix what's broken, and we'll just do our best to keep moving forward. This is for emotional interactions and relationships. When you put your foot in your mouth, uh, do you just get quiet and ignore it? Or do you say, wow, that was dumb. I'm very sorry. Uh, I'm working on getting better. 
and I'll, I'll do better going forward. It's the same, same exact thing. If you break something when you're trying to put stuff together, you go, well, now I have to fix this. And you just own it, and it looks like garbage when you're done. You go, yeah, it looks like garbage, but it works. And I learned <laughs> I won't break it the same way next time. Um, because the only other option is to run from it. And God's going to find you. And it's, it's really preposterous to think that you could run from God or hide from God in any meaningful way. You know you screwed up, and he knows you screwed up. And so the only... The only other thing to deal with it is either permanently run away for the rest of your life, always running away, always hiding, hoping no one ever finds out, or you turn around and you face your mistake and you own it and say, yes, that's my mistake. I'm sorry. I will do better. And then go do better. And when you screw up again in the exact same way, you, you figure it out. You start working on it and you do your best. You figure out why did you screw up that way twice what caused it and actually take steps to prevent the screwing up and um the then when you go face god don't mention another blessed soul have you eaten from the tree of which i commanded you not to eat that's a yes or no question that god asked adam and his answer was not yes yes sir i did his answer was, oh, this lady you gave me, she gave it to me. No. Yes. Yes, that was me. Don't mention anyone else when you're taking ownership. When you pray, when you ask for forgiveness from God, when you ask for forgiveness from other people, don't mention anyone else. Just own it. So, uh, what ways to be being passive hurt your family? If you just sit around not doing anything, uh, not taking an active role, not taking responsibility for things, you're going to teach your kids to do the same thing that you're doing. Uh, the easiest, sorry, it's not the easiest, it's the hardest way to parent, but it's also the simplest way to parent, is to be the man that you want your son to be. To become the man that you want your daughter to marry. Because... We all know that that's what's going to happen. How many times have you said, oh, my dad said that, or oh, my dad did that same thing? Yep. How many times have you looked at your wife and you're like, dang, I remember my mom doing that same thing. That's weird. That's because that's just the way humans are. As a parent, you set the, the defaults for your kid. So if you have a temper, your kid's going to have a temper. Uh, if you're irresponsible or passive and you sit around and you don't do anything, then your kids are going to be passive and irresponsible and sit around and not do anything. No matter how much you tell them to do the opposite, they're going to do what you do, not what you say. And so you make your kids' lives easier by making yourself better. You can make them better indirectly. And so, of course, the exact opposite, if you wallow in sucking, then your kids are going to suck. And it's... Now you've made their job harder for getting better. So, one small way you can lead your family. Uh, the easiest and the hardest one is turn off the TV, put the phone down, and just be there. And you'll find, you know, God hardwired you to be a dad. Uh, if you're just there and you're just present. Um... A good small thing I heard uh, from a Focus on the Family broadcast one time is for that drive home, turn your phone off, uh, put it on silent, don't let anybody call you for the drive home, clear your mind, and be praying so that when you get to your front door, you're prayed up, you've had some time to quiet your mind, and you're on point so when you, you can be at 100% when you come through that door and uh, be there for your family. Just be there. Um, I mean, instinctively... I think every man, when he looks at his kids doing something they shouldn't, is like, oh, hey, put, put your pants up, stop screaming and whining, clean that mess up. I mean, every, every guy I've seen tells the same stupid dad joke. Something about it is just kind of hardwired into being a dad. Once you become, once you get into that situation, um, but the trick is to be there and to pay attention and to show up and to uh, take responsibility for everything that happens. 
So that's all I got for you today. Uh, shoot me questions, comments, concerns down below. I've got the scripture and the questions in the description. And uh, let me know what you think. I'm on all of the major platforms on Facebooks and YouTubes and other such things. Check me out. All right. That's all I got for you. I will see you next time. Godspeed.